And Matt, Lady Ballers is the brilliant new movie from you guys at Daily Wire. Let's take a look at a little clip. Let's cut to the chase. I know you're not a woman. Hey, you don't know how he identifies. If you can beat them. What do you know about the US Opens for the Global Games? You want us to compete as women. $5,000 prizes. My lover says you were a great coach back in the day. Join. This is the way the world is now. My eight-year-old daughter told me all about it. So a guy can become a girl with no physical changes at all. Oh, that's called gender fluid. <laughs> I mean, it's a brilliant idea. Um, first of all, why did you make it? Well, I... I can't take credit for making the movie or writing it or anything like that. I, I play a you know relatively small role in the film, and uh, I think my my entire role is really just is really just me being trolled by the director of the film, who's also CEO of the company, Jeremy Boring, where he decided to write a role for me where I am the exact opposite of who I am in real life, just to make me as uncomfortable as possible. So I'm playing this um, this kind of left wing hippie character who's also a big a big hugger. I, you know, I'm, I'm big into hugging people in the movie. Um, but I think the reason why the movie exists is pretty simple. It's, number one, it's a really funny idea, and it's also, it's 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 the kind of it's the kind of movie that needs to exist. Like this this whole mm. concept of men competing against women in women's sports is absurd. It's it's ridiculous. It is it's laughable, and um, you know if this kind of thing was happening. 25 years ago, there would probably be a comedy like this made about it. But these days, yes. uh, well, they don't really make comedies anymore at all, but they certainly aren't going to make a comedy making fun of this. So, so uh, we did. And the truth is that it, it really takes the whole argument on the pro-trans athlete side to its logical conclusion. You know, I've always, when I've interviewed politicians who don't want to uh, speak common sense about this, I say, well, OK, so if you have limitless self-identity and anyone can say I'm now female, what happens if Usain Bolt or Floyd Mayweather decide they want to be a woman? Could, would you be happier than competing against biological females in women's sport? And they always have to say yes. And it's always completely preposterous. Floyd May Mayweather would kill women in a ring and Usain Bolt would win the 100 metres women's Olympic final by about... 99 metres. I mean, it's an absurdity, which this film brilliantly lampoons, but it's actually true. It is true, which is why you don't have to work that hard to make fun of it, and you don't even have to exaggerate that much. Uh, you know, this is one of the things, that actually, maybe it makes satire difficult these days, is that the reality itself is so ridiculous that uh, it's you know, usually in satire you're taking something, uh, you're, you're taking the logic to an extreme extent, to show how ridiculous it is. But in this case, we, you know, all you're doing is just, this is what's actually happening in real life. And I think that what you said there, there is key, though. You said that they, that they have to. You were talking to someone who supports men and women's sports. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they have to. They have to go along with it. They have to agree to whatever right. absurd scenario you throw at them. And they really do. They have to. Um, but it, I don't think they actually believe it. I think that the number of people who really no. deep down believe that it's fair and right for biological males to compete against females in sports, I mean, the number of people is, is vanishingly small. But on the left, they've basically boxed themselves into a corner, and so they have to defend this, and we should make them defend it. Whilst simultaneously trying to pretend that they are pro-women's rights. I mean, that's the absurdity, because, of course, it's women's rights to fairness and equality that are being dismantled at this altar of virtue-signalling nonsense. And, and they're also the people that have claimed in the past to care so much about, about maintaining women's sports. I mean, that's what Title IX was supposed to be about. You know, I, people often accuse me on the left. They'll say, that, they'll say, well, you don't even care about women's sports that much. You're just pretending. I never said that. I, I, don't, I don't wake up in the morning uh, worrying about women's sports. I don't, I don't watch women's sports. I, I, so in that sense, yeah, I don't, I don't care about it in that sense. But I do care about just what's right. I care about what's logical, what makes sense. Um, I care about the kids that are involved in these sports and protecting them. So, uh, yeah, it, but if, if, you, if you do pretend that this is something that's very important to you, then uh, the question is, why, why aren't you there uh, taking up right. this? Right, I mean, I care because I have a 12-year-old daughter who's quite sporty, and I don't want her to, if she was to suddenly be very successful at some sport, in women's sport, I don't want to have her 
have a dream killed or a place in a team or, you know, even you see it at the Olympic level. You see women being deprived of an Olympic place, a coveted, glorious Olympic place by a biological male. That's just not right. It's not fair. It's not right. It's not equal. It's none of those things. And you're also, I also would not want my daughter, yeah, I wouldn't want her athletic opportunities taken from her if she decided to get into sports. I don't want her to be in a position where she has to go along with something that is a, a, a total farce. Like that, it's yeah. just, it's wrong to put anybody, especially kids, no matter what the context is, to put them in a position where they have to, uh, where they feel pressured to go along with something like that. And especially when the pressure is coming from adults. I mean, it's one thing when you deal with peer pressure as a kid from other kids, but in this case, it's the adults that are using their authority and their power to, uh, usher you along in this direction. I think it's just utterly totally ridiculous. Wrong.